Hello everyone. The topic for today's class is Azola and BGA. BGA means blue green algae. We have come across these two terms in our previous lecture. Azola and BGA they form symbiotic relationship for fixation of nitrogen. BGA is also known as cyanobacteria. and this cyanobacteria form symbiotic relationship with azola and they fix nitrogen symbiotically now what is azola azola is a small floating fern is a pteridophyte it is an aquatic plant okay now this azola can be of many types there are many species of azola like we have azola pinnata azola microphylla azola caroliniana so these are some species of azola and all species of azola have symbiotic relationship with anabina anabina is a bga anabina is a cyanobacterium now this azola is an aquatic plant belonging to family salvinaceae and this plant requires sunlight nutrient and appropriate temperature to grow it is a pteridophyte and it is the only known pteridophyte that lives in symbiosis with a nitrogen fixing bacterium or a diazotroph or you can say diazotrophic cyanobacterium okay cyanobacterium is also known as blue green algae or bga all the species of the genus azola which is a pteridophyte an aquatic fern harbor in their fronds in their leaves the cyanobacterium and the cyanobacterium name is anabina azoli so the name of the symbionts or the two partners one partner is fern which is called azola aquatic plant and the other partner or symbiont is a cyanobacterium or bga blue green algae and it is known as anabina azoli it is a bacterium it is a diazotroph now this azola is being used as bio fertilizer in agriculture and also being used as fodder for animals and also as food for people okay in some countries when there is suitable conditions the normal green color of azola changes to red brown color we have seen the color of azola is green but if the growing conditions are not suitable like if the temperature is quite high if the nutrient is not there then there normal color changes to red brown this azola which are aquatic pteridophyte when azola dry matter was analyzed it was revealed that it contains more amount of nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium than in cattle manure or fym so compared to fym let us see here in azola 2.5 to 3.5% nitrogen is present 0.15 to 1% phosphorus is present 0.25 to 5.5% potassium is present compared to 0.31% of nitrogen 0.5% of phosphorus and 0.7% of potassium in the cattle manure azola adds more nutrient to the soil when applied to soil than cattle manure so since azola provides nutrients to the plant nutrients to the soil this azola can be used as bio fertilizer we know the term fertilizer means a chemically synthesized compounds which can supply nutrients to plants the primary nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus potassium they are supplied they can be supplied through 
fertilizers to the plant and they are used in modern agriculture so if we use azola azola also gives nitrogen phosphorus and potassium it adds these following nutrients to the soil but the quantity quantity is less compared to fertilizers the chemically synthesized fertilizers however this azola dry matter when added to soil it has many other benefits it not only supplies nutrients it also improves soil parameters azola can be easily grown in flooded rice fields as biofertilizer because azola is an aquatic fern aquatic plant so we can grow azola in the rice field flooded rice fields we know that for rice cultivation uh, we need flooding flooding of rice fields for some duration of course we have upland rice cultivation as well now this azula has been used as biofertilizer in india china vietnam and many other countries of asia and even africa now this azula and anabina association is a living floating nitrogen manufacturing factory we can say that because azula is a floating fern anabina is a cyanobacterium now they are the symbionts or the partners forming one symbiotic association and since azola is floating we can call that this association is a living floating nitrogen manufacturing factory because anabina fixes nitrogen not azola anabina for fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere utilizing the photosynthetic machinery of azola azola gives shelter to anabina azola gives photosynthesis or carbon source or nutrients to anabina anabina in turns gives fixed nitrogen to azola now this association can yield as much as 150 to 200 kg of nitrogen per hectare per year when azola is used as biofertilizer for rice crop in the rice field it contributes to 40 to 60 kg of nitrogen per hectare per crop so it not only provides nitrogen and organic matter to the soil its growth prevents germination of weeds because when azola grows it covers the water surface completely so any weed below the azola surface below the azola layer will be deprived of sunlight and its growth will be inhibited so this is how azola uh, layer looks like it is a full grown uh, azola it is ready to be harvested here so it is one artificially made pond a shallow pond where there was water of course the water is here now also but we can't see it because the water surface is completely covered by azola growth okay so it is a thick mat of azola growth we have the cyanobacterium forming the symbiotic association in the fronds and we have a good amount of nitrogen fixed in this now this azola can be harvested from this pond and can be processed or directly can be used in the field so it will supply nitrogen and also organic matter and this organic matter when it is added to soil there will be improvement of soil properties when organic matter is added to the soil then many other microbes will also flourish in the soil now what factors affect azola production azola is an aquatic plant so it requires some environmental factors to grow temperature for azola growth should be 25 to 30 degree celsius when the temperature goes higher then there will be pest infestation and if the temperature is lower then 
the growth of the azula will be slow so there will be retarded growth light azula prefers partial shade azula does not prefer direct sunlight okay ph the ph of the water should be 4.5 to 8 for good growth of azula and the optimum ph for azula growth is 5 to 7 moisture azula is sensitive to dryness without water azula cannot be grown so a minimum water level is maintained wherever you want to grow azula so the water level should be such that azula can float then phosphorus phosphorus nutrition plays an important role in azula multiplication then what are the benefits of azula it has high nitrogen fixing ability because it is one aquatic plant one aquatic pteridophyte which forms symbiotic association with a cyanobacterium that is anabina azoli and we know the nutrient composition of dry matter of azola which is more than cattle manure and this azola anabina association is the living nitrogen manufacturing factory so it has high nitrogen fixing ability then high biomass production due to rapid growth the growth of azola is rapid so if you inoculate a pond a rice field pond means artificially created pond for the growth of azula if you inoculate azula bringing uh, some amount of azula from somewhere and then throw it on the water surface of a pond or a rice field then in a matter of 15 days you will get a good growth of azula and this azula biomass production is rapid just a matter of 15 days then third point azula increases the availability of many nutrient elements for the plant like zinc iron manganese and phosphorus azula also plays role in scavenging of potassium and this potassium is made available to plants azula improves physico chemical properties of soil because azula biomass when added to soil it not only provides nutrients it also provides organic matter the azula biomass is added to soil and then soil properties improve and when the soil properties improve like aeration organic matter content soil ph is corrected and since there is organic matter added many microbes will grow so microbial properties of the soil will also improve then azola improves fertilizer use efficiency azola controls weed growth azola releases plant hormones and vitamins and checks loss of water so these are the benefits of azola and this azola can be used as biofertilizer if we are not using in the rice field we can also use azola in any other crop because we can artificially culture or multiply azola and then harvest and apply to soil wherever required then comes the other symbiont or other partner and this partner is a cyanobacterium or blue green algae these two terms are synonymous blue green algae is also known as cyanobacteria or cyanophyta it is also known as pond scum commonly so this cyanobacteria can photosynthesize so these are photosynthetic bacteria but they are free living and can fix nitrogen so cyanobacteria it is a it's a group of bacteria they are free living and can fix nitrogen 
they are the only organisms in the earth which are able to perform oxygenic photosynthesis and also fix nitrogen so these two functions very big functions like photosynthesis and nitrogen fixation are carried out by these bacteria they are cyanobacteria or blue green algae they are single celled organisms they can photosynthesize they can fix nitrogen they are free living and these are the organisms which are amongst the oldest organisms known and they have been known since pre cambrian period about 3.6 billion years ago so cyanobacteria came to the earth probably they were amongst the first organisms which appeared on the earth and they probably played a crucial role in the evolution of higher plants and see the roles that cyanobacteria play they are free living prokaryotic single celled here in this picture what we see is a string of cells many cells are joined together some cells are larger and thicker now these cells are nitrogen fixing cells these cells take part in nitrogen fixation now the name cyanobacteria comes from the color of the bacteria they normally look green and sometimes they may turn bluish when the scum is dying so these cyanobacteria can form a very thin layer on the water surface so that's why they are called as pond scum now this pond scum is initially green in color but when they are dying then they turn bluish so they are called as blue green algae but they are not algae at all it is just a misnomer they are not at all algae they are bacteria okay so they are prokaryotic diazotrophic free living bacteria and the cyanobacterial colony or cyanobacterial thallus may be unicellular it may be colonial or it may be filamentous what we have seen in the previous picture is that cyanobacterial cells remain joined together and forming a filament like structure or filamentous structure so it is a filamentous structure it may be single celled also so there are many types of cyanobacteria now the principal pigment of all cyanobacteria is chlorophyll a in addition there are beta carotene and some accessory pigments like phycocyanin and phycoerythrin and these bacteria cyanobacteria have peptidoglycan or murin as the main constituent of cell wall so they are prokaryotic that means their nuclei uh, are not well organized they have peptidoglycan or murin as a constituent main constituent of cell wall and for all prokaryotic organisms peptidoglycan is the main constituent of cell wall this peptidoglycan or murin is the unique molecule unique compound present in prokaryotes okay so the cyanobacteria or blue green algae are prokaryotic single celled nitrogen fixing photosynthesizing prokaryotes so what is the importance of these cyanobacteria they are one of the early colonizers of bare and barren lands okay because they have very minimum requirements of water carbon dioxide and they can fix carbon also nitrogen also so they are the good food source for several aquatic animals spirulina which is a filamentous cyanobacterium 
is a source of SCP or single cell protein and nitrogen fixation is a characteristic feature of many cyanobacteria like nostoc anabina okay now this anabina forms symbiotic association with azola we have seen in the previous slides okay so anabina azoli and azola form symbiotic association so that nitrogen is fixed so this anabina and azola form symbiotic association otherwise there are many free living cyanobacteria which are there in the soil so cyanobacteria can be free living can also form symbiotic association certain cyanobacteria can produce toxins and therefore are harmful to aquatic animals including humans cyanobacteria play an important role in maintenance and build up of soil fertility consequently increasing rice growth and yield as a natural biofertilizer cyanobacteria are capable of reducing various kinds of pollutants and have advantages as potential biodegrading organisms the man made pollutants can be degraded by the cyanobacteria they have the ability and make the environment pollution free so they can be used as biodegrading organisms after water nitrogen is the second limiting factor for plant growth we know that in many fields and the efficiency of this element is met by fertilizer without water plant cannot grow so water is the limiting factor then next limiting factor is nitrogen without nitrogen plant cannot grow so nitrogen is a very essential element nutrient element required for protein synthesis dna synthesis chlorophyll synthesis and for synthesis of many other biomolecules so without nitrogen plant cannot grow now these cyanobacteria have the ability to fix nitrogen they have the ability to photosynthesize and they are free living they may also be living symbiotically with azola so they have many features which make them one of the earliest colonizers of this earth these blue green algae or bga or cyanobacteria are distributed worldwide worldwide means they are found in tropical regions they are found in subtropical regions temperate regions and even in the arctic region and antarctic region okay recently in this month only some researchers have found cyanobacteria in the antarctic region and those cyanobacteria had nitrogenous enzyme so the researchers assume that they are nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria now this bga or cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen under anaerobic conditions in specialized cells which are called as heterocyst the cells which are bigger in the string are the heterocyst and the heterocyst are designed in such a way that it maintains the anaerobic condition that is required for nitrogen fixation i hope you remember that the enzyme nitrogenase which has a role to play for nitrogen fixation is inhibited by oxygen so in the legume rhizobium association the nitrogenase enzyme was found to be protected by a compound called by a protein called leg hemoglobin so in this case the blue green algae or cyanobacteria which are free living they have a specialized cell called heterocyst where they maintain anaerobic condition 
where they keep oxygen away and keep the nitrogenous enzyme working so that nitrogen can be fixed and these heterocyst are about 5 to 10 percent of the cells in a filament all right then cyanobacteria are the group of photosynthetic organisms which can easily survive on bare and minimum requirement of light carbon dioxide and water they are phototrophic and naturally occur in several agroecosystems like paddy fields and from antarctica to arctic poles they fulfill their own nitrogen requirement by nitrogen fixation produce many bioactive compounds which promote the crop growth or protect the crop from pathogens and improve soil nutrient status so these cyanobacteria are really a very important bacteria so they are the early colonizers of this earth they are known to be in the earth for the longest time they are known to be in the earth since 3.6 billion years ago when it is calculated that earth originated 4.5 billion years ago and this cyanobacteria came 3.6 billion years ago and they played an important role in the evolution of plant in the earth so with this the lecture ends here if you have any query related to this course this video presentation you can write to me in the comment box so thank you very much